In this video, I'm making a mock-up for some awnings I'm going to be building just so I could work out some production details and show the customer. And if you're interested in that, stick around. So first I took some templates that I had of the front profile and the side profile and I laid them out on a piece of paper here so I could do some further um, laying out of the miters and get the true length stretch out for the material that I'll be using to make the frame. I'm going to be making the frame out of one and a half by quarter inch thick steel flat bar. So to get the stretch out on the flat bar, I'm just taking a compass that I have set at one inch, starting at one at the top of the profile, and just making marks all the way down to the end, and then I'll count them up. Uh, obviously, like I said, each one, each mark represents one inch, and then you know I have a fraction of an inch left over at the end, and that gives you the stretch out of the profile. So I'm getting more measurements off this template that I already have for the front profile. Uh, these smaller pieces will go up against the wall to help support the awning. Um, then I'll roll the flat bar and check it up against this template. I'll just keep making minor adjustments until it fits the template just right. And I do the same thing with the side profile, getting the flat bar where it fits just right. I had to use the anvil to get this tight curve. Now I'm starting to lay out the miter for the copper uh, where the front profile and the side profile meet. First I start with the stretch out uh, on this piece of paper and those lines are one inch apart uh, like I made the marks with the compass and so th that represents the true length of the flat pattern that we'll be making with the copper so the process works the same for the front miter and the side uh, profile miter but what you do is you just go down to each mark which isn't necessarily an inch down on this paper that you see here. And then you say you're going down one uh, mark on the left side, which would be the front profile. And then you use a square to go over to the right side and measure how far away that is from the edge or how far away that is from the zero. And then you go back to that previous sheet we had and you make a mark that distance away from the edge. So this right here represents the flat pattern for the side miter, side profile miter and it's almost a straight line uh, which I thought was interesting but it doesn't have much curve on the side but uh, except for at the very end. Then I'm just repeating the same process to get the front profile miter uh, flat pattern for the copper on this sheet. So now that I have uh, some patterns for the miters, I transferred them to some sheet metal so they'll last a little bit longer because I'll be reusing them. And I also made some inch and a half wide um, templates for um, so I could place some more structure at the corners so same pattern and this is how it kind of fits up together so looks like the layout we did worked now I'm transferring the pattern to the copper so I can cut it out but I'm leaving a little bit as you can see on the bottom for a hem and I need to add about uh, 3 eighths 
on the uh, miter itself to bend over uh, so I can lap over the front over this piece. So at this point I've added some steel in the corner. I've rolled and bent the copper a little bit. Um, I've bent over the lap as you can see at the corner and now I'm drilling holes for rivets. These are just domed head copper rivets, eighth inch uh, thick. And I decided to make it a little bit easier on myself because I'm just using a hammer. Um, so I decided to anneal them, heat them up, soften them up. Now I'm just placing the rivets in there and like I said, just using a hammer and have a setting tool that has a little dome shape that I'm placing over the top and just smashing them down. Now I've got the front coming together with the side and what I'm using here is just Silfoss brazing rod 15% silver and I'm just using the TIG torch to um, braise those two sheets of metal together and I didn't get the patina on video but I just used a Birchwood KC number 38 that I got from Sculpt Nouveau you can look it up and use the Scotch Bright and that's how it turned out ready to get the customer seal of approval thanks for watching be sure to hit that like button guys and if you enjoyed this one be sure to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.